What's up with the YouTube? It's your boy Kang Hitter. We back in the building with another video, man. Hey, today on the menu, uh, we have a woman by the name of Bianca Ellis, 32 years old, uh, fatally stabbed a three-year-old child and mother. Um, as the report said, uh, we, we do have footage that shows the moment the suspect spots the mother and the three-year-old boy before stabbing him fatally while also stabbing the, the mother inside of a grocery store parking lot while they were loading groceries inside of the back of the vehicle. Uh, the footage shows the suspect holding a kitchen knife while walking toward Margaret Wood, 38 years old, and her son Julian Wood, three years old, inside the Giant Eagle supermarket in North Olmstead, Cleveland. Uh, the suspect spotted the, the mother and child, then turned around and began following them. Less than six minutes later, Julian was bleeding to death on the parking lot asphalt as Margaret pled with paramedics, don't worry about me. Um, I heard screaming. I looked back and she says, uh, the woman was uh, stabbing the lady and the child, is what a witness reported. Julian suffered fatal stab wounds to his back and to his cheek while sitting in the shopping trolley. So the child was sitting in the trolley, uh, the little thing that you put push the kids around uh, the store in while the mother was loading groceries, man. And this woman just came up and, and attacked the mother sustained non-life-threatening injuries. Both were rushed to St. John's Medical Center. All I heard was just screaming, and the lady grabbed her towel from the bottom of the cart, and that's when it all fell over and collapsed, uh, the witness said. Bianca Ellis, 32 years old, was arrested a short walk away, still holding the bloody kitchen knife. So she didn't even try to flee. She was just a stone's throw away. Uh, she had been previously arrested days earlier on a parole violation, but was released. Uh, she was charged with aggravated murder and her bail was set at $1 million. Um, as I said, we do have footage of surveillance footage of the woman following, I mean, literally spotting the mother and child, following them out of the store into the parking lot. Uh, they don't show any graphic scenes, uh, the actual attack. Um, some of the paramedic footage is blurred out, so it should be safe for YouTube. Um, but like I said, man, let's get into this video. And remember, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, we're going to get into that video first, and then i um, going to show um, when she was first arrested just days prior and when she went to the police station just 30 minutes before she attacked the uh, child and mother. Let's get into the video, man. Let's go. You may never understand why a woman stabbed a three-year-old boy and his mom at Giant Eagle on Monday, but we do know the alleged attacker had been arrested in that same area four days before that. Police have released video of that arrest. Dan DeRose joining us now with that, and police have to really investigate all of this, Dan, as they try to get justice for this family. And people may ask at home, why are we continuing this story? It's because there are so many questions. Who is this person? How could it be done at random and that with no uh, association with the mom or that three-year-old little boy? Who is Bianca Ellis? We know that the attack happens right here in North Olmstead in the Giant Eagle parking lot, but it's four days prior. So we're talking last Monday that right here on this corner, it's actually this corner right here out front of the Walmart, that police have an interaction with Bianca Ellis. She is in a wheelchair. She can walk herself in her wheelchair. Someone has called 911 saying uh, she looked like she may need some help. Officers find her on the sidewalk there, have an interaction with her. They get her ID. 
but it turns out she has a warrant for her arrest. Now, you're about to watch this in, uh, interaction with police. Uh, you can judge for yourself. Uh, I've seen hundreds of arrests on tape, and this one seems to be fairly routine. Hello. Hi. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm going over here to the bus stop. Are you, you're okay though. Somebody called because they were concerned about you. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of uh, get lightheaded from my medicine. 5221, I'm out. Do you, do you need assistance at all, or you need an ambulance or anything? Are you feeling all right? No, I think the temperature is just getting to be just right. Okay. Okay. Um, so first off, we can see here that the woman does suffer from some mental health issues obviously uh she's on medication um so that's going to be the little caveat in, in this uh situation so the the woman does obviously have uh issues so well, let's carry on with the video and see what happens uh do you have an idea on you just so i can tell them that you're all right thank you Copy. All right, Bianca, you know you got warrants. Girl, I don't know. They're oh, probably for here, yeah. Yeah, so we got to check on those, all right? Oh, yeah. You got anything crazy on you? No guns, knives, no, drugs, no, bombs, no, nothing like that? No. All right, I'm going to cuff you in the front, okay? That's fair? Go ahead, face me for a second. Right here. Thank you, ma'am. I don't want to pinch you. Man, I ain't even gonna say nothing how, about how she threw them hands out there. Y'all rewind it if you want to. Let's go. As you saw, she went willingly, uh, didn't interact with police in any strange way. She was taken into custody. She was transported to where uh, that warrant was out of. It was a probation violation warrant. She hadn't completed a class on a theft charge, and that's why she had a warrant out for arrest. It wasn't anything violent. But it is that interaction with police on Thursday, right here, that brings her back to the police department, which is right here on Monday. You're gonna see that in new video just released today. A little bit of strange behavior at the police station just a half an hour before the attack at Giant Eagle. That's coming up at- Gang crime that has all of Northeast Ohio thinking of a little boy and his family. First at four, we have new video giving a glimpse of his accused killer's background as investigators try to get justice for Julian and his family. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Versansky. And I'm Brian Duffy at three. We showed you police picking up Bianca Ellis just days before the attack in the Giant Eagle parking lot. Now, new at four, Dan DeRose back with when she returns to that police department now about 30 minutes before the attack. Yeah, so the only reason we're doing this is trying to show uh, the, the placement of this, the timing of this. We were told by detectives earlier this week that Bianca Ellis had been in their lobby just about a half an hour before the attack. So how is that possible and what was her demeanor? We'll get to that in a second. But I want to put in relationship for you where we're talking about. Here is the North Olmsted Police Department. You're going to see her around there. Uh, and then you're going to see the moment that she leaves there and she heads for the Volunteers of America. This is where Bianca, according to prosecutors, stole two knives and then went into the Giant Eagle, was in there for all of about a minute and 30 seconds uh, when she came out following uh, the mother and child. Take a look at the video, though, a half an hour before the attack. You can see the timestamp in the upper left-hand corner. She walks herself around with a wheelchair. She comes into the lobby. There is no audio here. This was given to us by the police station. She is telling police that when she was arrested last Thursday, they took some of her cash. They ask her for an ID. They look at her ID. They say, no, we don't have your cash. And she calmly leaves. She doesn't cause a scene. She's only in the police station for all of about three or four minutes. Now, as, as they said earlier, you saw it in the wheelchair, but as they said earlier, she really don't need the wheelchair. <laughs> so you finna see her skip out the wheelchair like free as a bird and head over to the um, supermarket and, you know, get into the situation. Let's go. You can see her now leave with her wheelchair 
And it's about here that she makes a decision. She ditches the wheelchair. You can see her hopping, skipping down the stairs at the police station. And it is from here that she walks herself across the street to the shopping complex. What happened between the end of that meeting with police that led her to make that trip across the street to Volunteers of America, we may never know. But the video uh, that's inside the Giant Eagle that we have chosen not to show uh, really just shows that she picked that mother and child at random and followed them into the parking lot. Nikki? Well, it, it, it is uh, very scary and eerie to see somebody frolicking, literally frolicking to go and delete somebody. But like I say, um, the caveat here is uh, mental health. So, um, and, and that's not an excuse for, for this mother and child in this situation. Uh, for that child that lost his life and that mother that has to deal with it, the pain of that for the rest of her life. Um, and who knows if she has any more kids and will she be able to, and if she doesn't, will she be able to even have any more, you know, it's, that, that, that could literally be her one and only child. You know, I don't know that, but it, it's just painful to see and eerie uh, to watch. So right now they are, we are going to get into the footage of what took place inside of the store. Um, they're not going to show any graphic details. Of, they're not going to show the attack. So you don't have to brace yourself for that. They're not going to show the actual attack. What they're going to show here is when this woman, Bianca, spotted this mother and son at random, at random, and followed them out outside the store. Uh, and they're gonna show, show the arrest uh, that she received uh, from the officers also. So let's get into the video, man. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's go. There's a child, he's, he's bleeding all over the place. He's, we're at North Homestead John Eagle. Um, I don't know what happened to him. He's... Okay, what exactly is going on? Um, there's a kid, he's bleeding all over the place. We're at Giant Eagle. He's outside. Um, we're in the parking lot right now. Um, what is, there's a top. Yeah, I, I gotta bring it back. Did you catch that? I gotta bring it back. We're gonna look at it one more time. Just said random, like, uh, she just saw him and it was like, uh, today's the day. Today's the day, man. I'm telling you, hey, we live in a, in a, in a, a world right now where people like this that should be receiving more help, meaning they should be in someone's facility, maybe away from the, the public. Um, that way the public is more safe and they're receiving the help that they need. But that's, not, that's not happening right now on a large scale. So... Um, we as citizens, we do have to be more mindful of random things happening out of the blue. I mean, just, just take a look at, at some of the things that's happening in, in New York City right now. I'm definitely seeing that. You gotta keep your head on the swivel out here. Let's go, check it out. He's, he's bleeding all over the place. He's, we're at North Homestead John Eagle. Um, I don't know what happened to him. He's... Okay, what exactly is going on? Um, there's a kid, he's bleeding all over the place. We're at Giant Eagle. He's outside. Um, we're in the parking lot right now. Um, okay, is the child conscious and breathing? Is he breathing? I don't know. But they're doing CPR on him. They're doing CPR? Yes, right now. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, I'm gonna stay on the phone with you for a couple more minutes. I have officers in, in route. Okay, I'm gonna okay. get a couple more things from you, okay? Okay. I didn't I didn't see it. I just heard I just heard them yelling and then we were on break in my car and I work at Giant Eagle right now. Okay. Okay.
What's your last name and callback number? What? What's your last name and callback number? Uh. Okay. Okay, there's police here. Can you see the police? Yes, there's a police car right now. Okay, I'm I gonna go ahead and hang up. Okay. Thank you. Miss uh, Ellis was inside the Volunteers of America store where she obtained a butcher knife or, or some type of kitchen knife. Um, unknown at this point if she paid for that knife or if she stole it, but then she was then seen exiting Volunteers of America, um, walked over to Giant Eagle where she was on their cameras, um, spotted uh, Mrs. Wood and her son, and then proceeded to follow them out to the parking lot. And somewhere near their vehicle, Miss Ellis then attacked the two of them. The young child suffered two stab wounds, uh, one to the uh, face and one to the uh, back, and then she suffered one to her shoulder area. Um, the female was located, still carrying the knife that she used during this uh, incident, near the uh, Dover Center exit from Giant Eagle. She was taken into custody. Uh, she provided no resistance to us, and she was immediately transported to the North Olmsted City Jail. Uh, the officers on scene also tended to the uh, two victims. It was three-year-old uh, male, and then the, his mother, 38, uh, both of North Homestead. Our officers did an amazing job doing life support, uh, life-saving measures on uh, both the child and the adult. Unfortunately, though, as we know, the uh, young child did pass away yesterday. Yeah, but like I said, man, it's a tragic situation. Uh, like I said, the, the caveat to this situation has got to be mental health, even though that's not, that's not going to be a good enough excuse for this mother and, and, and her child that lost his life. Uh, but like I say, with, with, with the mental health crisis being what it is right now and, and that industry being pushed to the brinks of not having enough workers, not have enough funding, uh, being overloaded. And believe me, I know personally because I have, uh, someone that I take care of that needs some of those services. And, and it can get kind of scarce out here and hard to get. Um, we're dealing with the migrant situation happening in New York City and all over, which I'm taking a look at that also. So we definitely have to keep our head on the swivel out here. But, uh, like I say, tragic situation. But, uh, y'all let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It's your boy, Kang Hitter. Building my kingdom, one brick at a time. I'll do what you're doing. I'm out.